there, Akuma fans. Charlie with the Gossiger Application staff starting a new video series today, and I'm all jolly. We're going to start a bunch of uh, short videos that are just describing some of, the, uh, some of the features of the Akuma product and what makes it a clear choice over some of the competition that you have out there. One of them is the simplicity of the machine, and it's illustrated very well in the modes for an Akuma product, whether it's a lathe, a mill, a multitasking machine, all Akuma products have three modes, auto, MDI, and manual. And if you've ever stood in front of anybody else's machine, you're probably used to seeing modes that look like this. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of stuff. Other machine tools have upwards of seven, sometimes eight different modes, but Akuma makes it simple, down to three. Let's talk about our three modes, auto, MDI, and manual, and why we don't need all of these. We'll start with the biggie. I love to, to just wax philosophical for hours on the zero return button. The zero return mode is a throwback to the bad old days when you would power off a machine tool. The axis in question had no idea where it was. It had no way of retaining that information. So every time you would re-energize a servo, turn the power back on to the encoder, the axis would be like, Hey, what am I doing here? Do, do, do. And you would have to go into zero return mode, hit the axis positive button, and it would then move the axis in the positive direction until it reached a limit switch. And that switch would say, ah, here you are. Now the axis would know where it was until you removed power or you hit emergency stop or you went into machine lock or you just got sick of that product and you bought a new one. Oh, sorry, I went there. So somewhere along the way, about 20 years ago, somebody decided, hey, why don't we put a battery on this thing? We're gonna call it the automatic pulse coder. Ooh. And now this battery would remember where the axis was even if you powered off the machine. All right, well, that's a clever idea for a system that eh, sucks to begin with, but whatevs. And so people went with this and anyone who has ever had their batteries go dead on these pulse coders, they know what a nightmare it is. If you get the battery alarm, you have to remember, don't turn off the power of the machine and, and uh, leave it on and replace the batteries and okay, now everything's cool. But if you did one little mistake, somebody powered off the machine or if they pulled the battery when the, the machine was, on, was not on, uh, now it's a nightmare. When I worked service for some of the other guys, that was one of the biggest service calls I would ever get is, hey, I lost my homes, uh, nightmare. Akuma, way back before pulse coders even became a thing, they looked at the, the existing encoders on the market and said, this is ridiculous. We're not putting these things on our machines. It's, uh, no, they built their own. Every Akuma encoder for the last 30, 40 years has had a zero permanently etched on the encoder. So it knows where it is all the time. Because of that, you could literally turn off the machine tool power, remove the main power coming in, pull every battery that exists, open up the way covers, move the ball screw by hand, put everything back together again, and the machine would look at you and go, <laughs> I know what you did. It knows where it is, period. It is such a bulletproof system, we, we've used it forever in a day, that not only do we not need a zero return, we don't even give you one because why why you don't need them on a on an akuma product so we'll whack that one right off the bat the next two redundant modes that you've got are handle and jog mode and as everybody who's ever used one of these things knows you click over into jog mode because you want to use the buttons to quickly position the machine but then to fine tune it you want the hand wheel so you got to reach over yeah find the mode select kick it over to handle and, and zzz, zzz, akuma decided that that was equally as ridiculous I've got a, an Akuma mill synthesized over here. I'm going to go into manual mode and let's bring my operations panel in here. Try not to uh, disguise the um, uh, picture of the machine. And I've got the buttons that allow me to go up and down. Yeah, awesome. I'm in manual mode. I don't have to switch modes. I just have to 
turn on the pulse generator and now I can use the hand wheel. On a lathe, the, uh, the pulse generator enable button can be left on at all times so that there is no, no keystroke, no mode select, no nothing to transition between pushing the button to make the uh, make the axis move automatically and then you grab the pulse generator and, and you move it. No bells and whistles. On a mill, basically what we're going to do to enable the jog buttons is we just take the increment select knob on the pulse generator and turn it all the way to zero and that will automatically enable the axis keys. So there is no need to have two separate modes on an Akuma product. So now we've taken our seven and we've just dumped the zero return, got rid of it, we don't need it. We've taken the handle and the jog and we've combined them into one key. So now we're down to five, but that still doesn't explain why we only have three. Auto mode, yep, we got one of those. That's what you're into run, that's normal. MDI mode, manual data input, works like everybody else's. Now we got this DNC link. Some machines call it DNC link. Some people call, some of them call them just DNC. Some of them call it tape mode. I call it a ridiculous solution for not having enough memory in your during control. DNC, if you don't already know, basically you have to have an external device that has enough memory to handle a large program. And the DNC mode, makes a little live connection between your device and this uh, this high memory device and the memory device just feeds it a little bit at a time and the machine tool will do it and then it'll discard the code because it doesn't have enough memory. Akuma said, well, why don't we have enough memory? We do. An Akuma product comes from the factory with 76 gigabyte hard drive. It's huge. There is a little specialty that we will do if we want to run a large program. It's not a mode, and I've got a couple of videos on it, but when you do your program select, that guy right there, we can simply specify whether we're doing a large program or a small program. It's coming from the same directory. We have enough memory. Therefore, the DNC button, don't need it. So now we're getting rid of that guy. We're down to four on the competitors, but there's still one extra. This edit mode, edit mode, mode? You have to be in a machine tool mode to modify data? What a crock. As anybody who's ever accidentally gone into edit mode while the machine's running, you know, uh, end of story. So Akuma does not require a mode. This is just a screen. I can get over here and I can edit a program while the machine is running. It's a computer, it can do this. I can even edit the program that is running while it's running. Now those edits won't become active until I reselect the program, but that's a whole nother video. Make sure you check it out. So we have now taken all of these cumbersome modes, seven of them, and just plopped them down to the three basic essentials, auto, MDI, manual. That's all you need. It doesn't need to be more confusing than that. Let's look forward to video number two in the series and uh, hope to see you out there in the field.